Okay, so like I said in the intro of the video, I'm not actually reviewing or talking about Attack of the Giant Leeches that's going to be playing behind me. I don't think it should get copyright struck as far as I know. I did some research. I think it's in the public domain, uh, but we'll, we'll find out. Uh, if this video doesn't go up, then that's why. Anyways, uh, I'm not talking about the movie. What I'm talking about is actually the projector screen uh, that it's on. Now, you may have noticed uh, with a keen eye, if you've watched kind of all my videos, the more recent videos where I've had the screen behind me, it may look a little different than what it looked like in my original home theater tour videos that I did when I first started the channel. And those were filmed several months ago, like four, five, six months ago. And in that time, I've upgraded the projector screen, and I just wanted to do a little video about it. The old screen that was in here was a deluxe screens, 120 inch uh, fixed frame screen. And it wasn't the greatest quality, but it certainly wasn't the worst quality. Uh, it wasn't up there with like elite screens. It was a little bit uh, lower down the you know, totem pole there in terms of quality, but it was still a pretty decent screen for what it was. And the whole reason I wanted to get something new is I had had that since like 2016 or 2017 when I bought it or 2018 in that range. So I've had it for five years, six years, and it is a very high gain screen. It's like a 1.1 or a 1.2 gain screen. And while that works with like the JVC projectors that I had in the past, my null LED projector that I've been using since, you know, the fall of last year, because of the way the system is set up on that and I can't really use the dimming feature because it's too aggressive, the black levels on that screen were always raised a little bit. And so I wanted something that would help lower the black levels and improve the contrast ratio. So. I had been thinking about upgrading the screen a little bit. And so what I ended up doing was instead of buying a screen outright to put here in my theater, I went the route of DIY, you know, budget building it myself. And so what I ended up doing, and I don't have any footage of me doing this necessarily. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of talk about it, but you can look online and find other YouTube posts and other like, you know, uh, informational posts online about doing this. And there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. I went kind of the cheapest route I could for it, but I built my own screen. And what I did is I took just a basic one by, or not one by four, I'm sorry, uh, two by two, I think it was, or maybe a one by four, I can't remember, but just basic wood, and mounted it to my wall. So I got a eight foot piece of, I think it was just like regular pine, just the cheapest stuff you can get from the store in a pre-cut eight foot length and made that the width of my screen. I bought two of those and then two, I think it's, I'm looking five foot, I believe, four and a half or five foot cut pieces for the sides. So effectively, I went from a 120 inch screen to this one is about 110 or 112 inches, roughly. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to try and use as much pre-cut wood so I wouldn't have to do a bunch of like cuts on it, that I could try and keep it to like rounded numbers and pieces that are already cut. And so I got those pieces of wood, I just mounted them to the wall, I used my projector, I put the image up on the screen, centered it on the wall, and then just attach the wood for the frame directly on the wall. And then just went to the store to actually Walmart, not even our local Walmart, I had to go to a different one, but go to Walmart to their fabric center. And I just got a three yard piece of black polyester uh, stretch material and a piece of three yard, like uh, kind of off-white, not super bright white, but kind of an off-white, eh, maybe cream color, you know, just a little more subdued, white 
uh, fabric, same thing, polyester, just stretched it over the frame with the black first and then the white in front of it and just stapled it around with staples and then cut off the excess uh, fabric after I pulled it taut. And I tried to make sure not to over tighten it to where you're stretching the seams too much. I tried to make it taut, but not over stretch it to where you're ripping the seams and causing some issues on the screen. But I did that, uh, wrapped it, you know, and stapled it onto the wood that I had bolted just into the wall with some screws. I made sure I put the screws in the studs and then a couple wall anchors uh, on the non-stud parts, put it directly in the wall, made sure it was level, made sure it was flat, put the fabric around it, and effectively I had a borderless screen. And because this wall isn't completely square, it's actually more square than I thought. In my original videos, I talked about how this front wall wasn't very square but I found out that was actually defects in that fixed frame screen I was using, that it wasn't fully square itself. It was kind of misaligned, and so I had to pull ends in and out to try and get things to square up on it. With this, it's basically square. Outside of one way up in the far, what would be your left-hand corner up there, uh, that kind of has a little bit of an indentation on the image up there, this thing is pretty much almost perfectly square. And so I was able to just bolt it on the wall, project the image and have effectively a borderless screen. But I still wanted to have a bit of a border because the cutting the fabric still left a little like jagged edge. It wasn't like perfectly square cut on the fabric uh, from it being stapled in there. So what I did, uh, and you'll probably get some close up B-roll footage here. I took just some, the cheap weather stripping from Walmart. I think it's like $3 for like a 10 foot roll. I bought two of those and just cut the eight foot strips and just put them along the top and the bottom to make like a black border and just, it has a sticky edge on it. So I just stuck it up and then kind of nailed it in. So that way it covered up all the loose fabric that was hanging down that, you know, I tried to cut as best I could. And then on the sides, which my wife actually gave me this idea because I had originally put the weather stripping on the sides and it looked kind of weird. You could see the like nails and stuff and she didn't really like that. And so she gave me the idea. I had these table runners that are up there. They're just a matte black table runner. Again, from Walmart, they were on clearance for like $3 a piece. And they're, I, I don't know, they're like, seven or eight foot or nine foot table runners, you know, real long ones. And I just mounted them up there and I just pushed them in a little bit and took that other weather stripping off the sides and just used it to butt right up against the edge to effectively cut off any of the little access, little stringies of the uh, fabric that I cut. And it adds the aesthetic of like a movie theater curtain a little bit right there, but it makes a black border. So if I do want to zoom the image out and have a little bit of spillover, it'll be right into that matte black fabric from the table runner. So you won't really see anything. But yeah, so that's effectively what I did. And the polyester fabric that I used is polyester uh, spandex like mix. I don't know what the percentage is on there, but it's stretchy, but it also uh, gives a really good contrast level with the white in front of a black layer. And then I have a straight black wall behind it, matte black paint that's painted on the wall. So the contrast ratio is way improved. Granted, what's playing back here, this is just black and white, and I have my LED light strip on here in the room. So the contrast level is not gonna look as good uh, with this projector especially with black and white content, you really need the lights off completely <laughs> to really see it. But this fabric is way better than the uh, deluxe screens that I was using. And even though I shrunk down the size a little bit, like I said, by like roughly eight to 10 inches uh, in you know diagonal width on there, I think it performs a lot better in this room because the other screen was almost too big for the space where we were sitting, especially in the main seating position to where you were almost getting edges cut out out of your field of vision, where this is just about the perfect size that you get the entire screen 
in your field of vision without anything getting cut off on the left or right. And I, you know, understand and uh, definitely appreciate the idea of having a giant screen and having as much space taken up by it as possible. Uh, I definitely understand that. But I think for this and with my projector I'm using in this room, I think this works out a lot better. And the image is still super sharp. Uh, the contrast level is improved. I mean, it's not a giant improvement. I mean, I'm not getting like JVC level black levels now all of a sudden, but you can definitely see a noticeable difference in the black levels. And the color uh, saturation and the bright scenes and white levels and higher peak color luminance is still really good as what you know the other screen was so i didn't lose any of that i just gained a little more contrast on the low end and even though it's a little bit smaller screen i think it works out and looks way better in this room and like i said it's a little smaller and so you don't end up losing some of your sight lines and vision getting cropped off because the image was you know too big uh, so anyways yeah that's my new projector screen that I have here. Uh, I just wanted to make a little video about it. It's definitely one of those things that buying a screen is nice, but building it, even though you've got to like go and get the material and, you know, put some effort into actually building it is way more cost effective because everything put together, I think I spent maybe about 50 bucks for everything. The fabric was $2 a yard. So I ended up only paying about $12 for the fabric. Uh, the staples in the stapler I already had here and the wood frame, I only needed a, like four, three or four, I think it's three, two eight foot pieces and then two, or maybe three eight foot pieces and then a cut or two eight foot and one 10 foot that was cut in half for the size. But all the wood all together was only like $20. So you add all that together, it was under 50 bucks. It was like 40 bucks or whatever that I paid for all the supplies and then just, you know, an hour or two of labor to put everything up there. Uh, you know, and then, you know, if you factor in the little weather stripping and all that stuff, you add another 10 or $12. So definitely under 50 bucks for everything. And I have arguably a better screen than what I had in here before, even if it does lose a little bit of size. So anyways, yeah, that's just my little story about my new projector screen that's up here. And I definitely recommend doing the DIY route, uh, you know, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, like I always say, I really do appreciate all the uh, feedback I've gotten, all the views, uh, the subscribers, the likes, you know, everything. I really do appreciate it. It is, uh, as I always say, humbling that I have the level of engagement that I do at this point. So uh, definitely be on the lookout. I've got more content in the works and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Oh, by the way, you can watch a little bit of this as I go over and turn the camera off and we'll see, you know, what the quality looks like here. Yeah.